Hi friends, welcome to the second part of our third week where we will be discussing the definition and the origins of nationalism according to Benedict Anderson and Ernest Gellner. So in the previous video we will discuss these issues with regards to the famous textbook of Benedict Anderson that is Imagined Communities and this time we will be doing the same by discussing the famous book of Ernest Gellner, that is Nations and Nationalism. So just like Benedict Anderson, actually Ernest Gellner argues that nations and nationalism are modern artifacts. They are modern phenomena. However, different from him, Ernest Gellner is providing a much more economic uh, explanation of the emergence of nationalism. So you will see many divergences or disagreements between these two scholars. Even so, their explanations are like found to be the most agreed and most popular ones in the lit literature. Okay, so Ernest Gellner defines nationalism as a political principle, which argues that national boundaries or ethnic boundaries and the political boundaries should be congruent. Or in other words, he is referring to the like over like principles, like the idea that the German country, like the political unit here, should be the country of Germans, or Turkey should be the country of Turks, or France should be the country of French people. When this like principle is violated, or when previously violated principle is fulfilled, we see the rise of nationalist sentiments. To just give a few examples uh, for the violation of these principles, let's we are assume let's we imagine a country of X, like Germany, and in this country, let's say there are different groups of people. Like there are like the German origins, ethnic the Germans, ethnic the Turks, like ethnic the Polish, ethnic the Vietnamese. For the people, like in this case, we don't see the congruence, like complete congruence between the political boundary, Germany, and the national boundary, because there are not German nations living in the country of Germany. So this issue, this incongruence, actually creates or leads to the emergence of nationalist sentiment. Unfortunately, this nationalist sentiment, when they became viable, mobilized pol political movements, they actually lead to lots of brutalities and atrocities. Because in order to like make political boundaries and national boundaries or ethnic boundaries you can either like assimilate the population like assimilate the non-germans you can just ban their language ban their religion ban their ethnic expressions blah 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 and you can try to like completely assimilate them into german culture or by the way i am just like making this example or you can exterminate them or kill them or you can do genocide over these people in order to homogenize your society in order to make political boundary and national or ethnic boundary congruent or like which happened in let's say during World War II right like the Holocaust or let's say when the German nation, German national group, is fragmented between different territories, like there were some the contested areas in the Czech Republic of the time, or in Austria at that time, in Poland at that time, and there were some, say, German origin people were living there, and the like rulers of Germany, like the Nazi Party, argued or framed themselves as the protectors of German people and they choose to occupy these territories where, where Germans have been living. Again, 
in order to make political boundaries congruent with national boundaries. Or, let's say, in <clears throat> let's say, imagine another country, for example, Turkey. In Turkey, we have, like I'm from Turkey, we have a diverse group of people living here with ethnic and uh, different ethnic origins, like for example, Kurds. For Kurdish people, or for nationalist Kurdish people, like the fact that they are ruled by Turkish origin politicians is a violation of their nationalist principles. And they want to live in a Kurdish nation. Or so. They can choose, and some of them do, choose to succeed, choose to gain their independence. And most of the time, this can only be achieved as a result of like arising civil wars or conflicts. So like the fulfillment of like this political principle, this nationalist principle is most of the time not a sweet, not a peaceful process. It is at best it at best requires assimilation, but it can also lead to civil wars international wars like transporter wars or genocides okay so states and nationalism so for the nationalist sentiment emerge as we just discussed there needs to be violation of this nationalist principles right the congruence between political bound and national boundary with the political boundary Ernest Gellner actually is talking about states like modern states since States are just modern inventions or modern creations, as we discussed last week. They are, and uh, so, <clears throat> the, like Ernest Kellner argues that, as we just discussed, nationalism is a political principle which argues the congruence between political boundary and national boundary. And with the political boundary, actually he simply means the presence or the existence of states. So in his definition of nationalism, actually states or the presence of states is a necessary condition of nationalism to emerge, but not a sufficient one. Since the state as we discussed in last week, is a modern artifact which emerged as a result of some contingencies, as we discussed with regards to Charles Tilly. Nationalism can also be and should also only be a modern phenomenon, which come after the emergence of states and violation of these nationalist principles with the particular organization of statehood and nation. Although these are, let's say, states are contingent events, they are not natural. Their evolution was not teleological or was not inevitable. Or the presence of states are not taken for granted. This is the same for nationalism or nations. However, today nations like appear as such given natural entities, like our organs or like, like our ears and noses and eyes. Like the disappearance or the violation of the this so-called naturality is seen as a disaster, although it is again a contingent phenomenon. It again is the result of some historical contingencies, accidents and conjunctures. So the ideology of nationalism, although these two are modern constructions resulting as a result of contingencies that nationalism sees states and nations as natural entities which are destined for each other so this is the ideology of nationalism okay so how nationalism came into being or why it emerged in the modern time actually Ernest Gellner here emphasized 
on the changing logic of social reproduction of the society. In the agrarian society, the division of labor is very simple. And it can reproduce itself, it could reproduce itself through some local uh, practices. So through guilds or through familial education or some other or uh, very locally organized way of productions, reproductions. However, in industrialized societies like we have been living in, we see a great degree of complexity and division of labor, which is not the case for an agrarian society. So this society, our industrialized, our modern, our advanced society, actually requires education, like as a mean to reproduce society or as a mean to create like group of people who can achieve or who can fulfill the function which have been carried out by earlier generations right so we need someone to fly our airplanes we need someone to help us carry out our financial transactions we need someone they say who will drive our buses like we need someone who will invent like cell phones or we need someone who will like work for the production of complex computers none of them was the case in agrarian society which was mostly revolving around agriculture apprenticeship or car carpenter like uh, small and localized jobs today like this industrialized, this modern society is a new phenomenon and requires like different strategies to reproduce itself. So today we are or we have a sustained, sustained belief or we have a constant expectation of, let's say, uh, unlimited growth, economic growth and continuous progression. So this requires like this emphasis on economic growth requires a, a complex and mobile division of labor and requires actually manpower uh, or laborers with some technical know-hows like skills or universal literacy they need to read, read and write and they need to have certain numerical skills so like this society this industrialized society requires like replacement of one individual by another or requires fluidity, fluidity of people between different tasks they transition from one job to another so in order to achieve this replaceability or substitutability, you need to actually like have a group of people which can easily be organized or which can easily read, write, have basic numerical skills and have basic technical skills. In order to achieve that though, you need to have a like centralized curriculum because you want everyone to have at least the basic set of skills also you need to have a standardized language because in the workplace you need like constant communication like constant frequent precise communication between otherwise strangers people so you need to have a like consensually agreed and understood like syntaxes or in other words homogeneous or standardized language and in order to achieve that you need to have a nationwide or a countrywide schooling managed by a centralized authority so this necessity actually requires an, a lot of like political power economic power uh, for the carrying out for the carrying out this massive project 
which cannot easily be achieved through previously prevalent like local ways of reproduction you cannot organize it through guilds or you cannot just inherit these information these skills get these skills by your parents so exo education is the primary means for the social reproduction of our industrialized society and this can only be achieved in the level of state structures so nationalism as an ideology actually provides the necessary ideational ingredients for the state authority to carry out this project of homogenization and provision of standardized centralized curriculum in standardized language for the acquirance of basic reading writing numerical and technical skills so this process of culturation this process of homogenization this process of standardization actually leads with the rise of nations according to Ernest Gellner so this is the account that he develops in his book uh, so thank you so much for listening and hope to meet you again in another video